Okay, so inside of our booklet, we're going to start with like bases. So I want you to title this first page across the top, like bases. Draw a line all the way across underneath that. And then down the center of the booklet, I want you to use a dashed line to divide the two sides to about here. And then we're gonna draw another line here. So we have three places in our booklet that we're gonna take notes here. <clears throat> There are three rules that have like bases. The first one we're taking notes on today is the product rule. The product rule is like when we have x squared times x cubed, what happens with those kind of exponents? It's a product rule because we're going to multiply in the end, but we can add together the exponents to combine them. So when we have the same base and they're being multiplied, we can add the exponents. On the right side, we're going to do what I call the power rule. When you have a base with an exponent in parentheses and another exponent outside, we multiply those two exponents. I think of this one as power to a power. The third rule we're going to put on these two pages is the quotient rule. And that's when we have like bases being divided. We take the, exp the exponent from the numerator minus the exponent from the denominator. And we get that. If, when you do that subtraction, you end up with a negative exponent, we have to do something else with it. But for simplicity with the quotient rule, same base in a fraction or a division problem, you subtract. Here is a fun math fact. I was at a meeting with a bunch of other math teachers that a lot of math teachers did not know this fun fact. The division bar this is called <laughs> Nope. If you ever play Scrabble, it's a good word because it would get lots of points. The vinculum. It just grew a little bit. I have a bad Okay, recall I am recording this and moving on, so if you're going to need to go back, you will be able to either borrow my booklet or watch the video. 
Next two pages. Take your pen and I want you to do Morse code style down this one. A dash and a dot. A dash and a dot. This is not an exponent rule, it's an exponent hint or tip. If a constant or variable does not have a visible exponent then the exponent is an anybody want to guess one. it's an invisible one So as an example, if I have x squared y z, that is the same as x squared y to the first and z to the first. Of course, the other invisibles here are in front of all those exponents. There's an invisible coefficient of one as well, right? All of these would have a one here as well. Okay, for the next page, I want you to put an x with its exponent of zero as a place where we can take notes inside of the zero. Anything raised to the zero power equals what? One. One. <laughs> so x to the zero power is equal to one. One thousand to the zero power is equal to one. To make perfect sense. What about y to the uh, power of zero? That also equals one. Y to the power of zero equals one. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Anything to the power of zero equals How about x squared, y to the third, z to the fifth in parentheses raised to the zero power? It's one. That also equals one. Cool, I guess. I thought it would be the same thing. And remember, you guys have the proof. You found this out the other day when you were doing the proofs. So the reason why you can also prove. Nikita. So Correct. We have two more small pages to take notes on. And this set of pages is all about negative exponents. Thank you. Negative exponents. We're just going straight across here. We will be using both sides, but we're not putting anything down the middle. Let's start here on the left. Negative exponents. Are equal to. Their positive reciprocal.
Here is an example of that. X to the negative third over Y to the negative third is equal to Y to the positive third and X to the positive third. Do you see what happened? There's the reciprocal. And there's the reciprocal. A way to help remember this is cross the line and change the sign. We never want to leave things negative with exponents. They always want to get changed to positives. Yep. I zoomed way in since somebody doesn't have his glasses. Oh, makes sense. Hmm, what is that is? Again, to turn a negative exponent into a positive exponent, you want to cross the line and change the sign. Here's an example of us doing that. If I have 1 over 5 to the negative third, I'm going to cross the line and change the sign. And I'm crossing the line with 5 becoming 5 to the third over 1 equals 125. We never want negative or negative exponents. You always it's, you're not complete. It's like it's not simplified yet. Oh, okay.